the challenge in front of us, and now we'll, uh, we'll get to work. We're honored this morning uh, in our morning's, morning's programs to have two state, two statewide elected officials with us, and uh, that's a testimony to all of you in the working relationship that you and our staff have developed with our state's leaders. And the first of those officials is uh, State Auditor Tom Schweig. State Auditor Schweig graduated from Yale, from Harvard Law School, and began his professional career at the law firm of Brian Cave, where he practiced law for over 20 years. He has a distinguished history of public service, including serving as the Chief of Staff to three SU Ambassadors to the United Nations, and as the Chief of Staff of Special Counsel Investigation into the conduct of the U.S. government in connection with the 1993 siege of the Branch Davidian compound at Waco. From 2007 to 2008, Swice served as the U.S. Coordinator for Counter Narcotics and Justice Reform in Afghanistan and was accorded the personal rank of Ambassador by President Bush. Please help me in welcoming State Auditor Tom Swice. Thanks, Blake. Thanks for having me back again this year. It's always a pleasure to talk to you all. Um, as you know, the state auditor's job is to root out fraud, waste, abuse, and corruption in government. We audit only, only government, not farmers. Uh, our job is to make sure uh, that your government is performing for you. I talked last year about some of the changes I made in the office when I came in. I put in a rapid response team, a grading system, an audit follow-up team, uh, and that's really produced, we think, good results in making sure government is more accountable for everybody. But I did a little bit of studying, and actually, you hear a lot about the audits we do, say, at the St. Louis City Schools or the Kansas City Schools or the big agencies in Jefferson City, and we will be auditing the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Transportation next year. But what you don't see so much is that actually two-thirds of the 150 audits I do every year are in rural areas. Cities, counties, uh, local governments, fire protection districts, often a petition of the voters comes in and they ask us to do a, uh, an audit and we do it. We're trying to make sure that government is accountable not just in the big cities but also in the rural areas and most of our effort actually occurs uh, in the rural areas. One of the things I'm most proud of that we've done and which we've implemented all over the state is we put in an anti-embezzlement program. I think the worst thing you can do when you're a public official is steal taxpayer money. And since I've been auditor, uh, we now all have training on how to spot someone stealing your money. And it starts with, for example, closed loop accounting. So if we go into a county and we see the same person bringing in the money, depositing the money, getting the bank reconciliation, keeping the delinquency book in a safe, uh, there's no one else looking at it, that's the first sign of an embezzler. Second sign of an embezzler, embezzlers never take a vacation. So we always look for leave records because they don't want anybody else to look at the books. So we look at leave records. Third sign of an embezzler, they always give expensive gifts to their coworkers. They feel guilty about stealing your money, so they give out a lot of gifts or give very, very large donations to charity. They live beyond their means. By the time you get to number five or six on the list, you have an embezzler. And since I've been state auditor, we've now found 27 public officials around the state stealing your money, two thirds of those in rural areas of Missouri. And those people are either going to jail or they're on their way way to jail. The most striking example we found was up in northern Missouri, a rural area. Uh, a public official there stole $568,000. The vast majority of that money was from farmers and people in the farming business. Uh, basically $568,000. And when we caught this, what the person did was they would take the money off of uh, property tax that you all were paying and then the, the, the collector would deposit uh, the money in her own personal account, and then she'd mark the farmers delinquent on their taxes, and then keep the tax delinquency book in a safe so y'all didn't know you were marked delinquent on your taxes. So when we came in to audit the books, everything balanced, because for every situation where we didn't have the money, there was a delinquency marked in the book. But what we knew was, in a typical rural county, the delinquency rate is less than 10%, and in that particular county, it was almost 30%. So we knew, okay, something was wrong, and it turned out that that person had stolen $568,000 of money, mostly from farmers. When we confronted her with the fact that she just stolen over half a million dollars of your money, the, 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 the response we got was very typical of embezzlers. They have a total sense of entitlement. She said, can we keep this quiet so I can get another job? Literally, that's what happened. And we said, you're going to have another job. It's making license plates, and she's doing 33 months in the federal penitentiary right now. So that's what we try to do for you, is make sure your government is acting more accountable for you across the state of Missouri and will continue to do so. Um, but that's, that's what I do for you. I wanted to tell you a little bit about what you do for me. When I, I think Blake told you I have a long 
career in public service, but I never was in politics until four years ago. I waited until I was 50 years old before I ran for anything. I mean, literally, I did not run for like class president in high school or anything. I mean, the first time I was ever on a ballot was in 2010. I got into politics, and it's a business where insincerity and and lack of integrity is, is everywhere. And what I like most about going to the rural areas of the state and talking to you all uh, as we try to make your government better is the authenticity you see from the farming community. I mean, you help us be authentic because in the business I'm in, there's not a lot of authenticity. I want to thank you for what you do uh, for me in keeping my feet on the ground and making sure I understand who it is that put me where I had to be and how I need to act going forward. Um, this all reminds me of the story I heard. You may have heard this story before about the, you heard this about the 10 politicians driving around rural Missouri in a bus. They're driving around and they're driving by a farm and they crash into a, a tree. And it's a very, very, very bad scene. Uh, and the farmer comes out and he looks at the bad scene and says, well, I think even they deserve a right proper burial. And he digs 10 holes and puts the dirt on top and puts the flowers on top and says a prayer and goes and he has dinner with his wife. And the next day, the sheriff shows up and sees the mangled wreckage of the bus. Uh, and he goes into the farmer and says, what happened here? It looks like a terrible accident. The farmer said, yeah, it was a terrible accident. He said, are they all dead? The farmer said, well, a couple of them said they weren't. Uh, <laughs> but you know politicians always lie, so I buried them all anyway. <laughs> uh, so thank you for keeping me grounded. Just don't put me underground. Thank you very much.